What a time to be alive. I knew uh I knew Google owned I knew Google owned YouTube, but I never like looked into the history of it really. I have some super old videos uh that I can't find anymore. <laughs> uh there is some like super old content that I uploaded probably like fourteen, fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh I had this I had this YouTube channel called the Daniel and Sean show or the Sean and Daniel show. I can't remember what it was, yeah. but the only video on there is like, us like jumping around on a trampoline. <laughs> and that's it. And it's just like, we was like fighting on a trampoline jumping and like the video ended. And it was like the song got copywritten because it was, uh, it was, it was a copywritten song. I can't remember the name of it, but it was a copywritten song that I put on there. And I was like 13, years old when I yeah. uploaded that video. So it was a long time ago. I can't believe I knew how to like do all that back then. Oh, uh, you were 13. That was like 20 years ago. <laughs> it was a long time. It was like 13, 14. I was 13 or 14. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll go back and look and see like if that video is even still on YouTube. I, I, I think it is. And then I've got old content for like when I was skateboarding and I was like filming with cell phones. So back when me and buddies used to skateboard in high school, we used like an actual camcorder, but like we never uploaded anything. So I've got like an old camcorder in there that's like full of skate videos and has never been on any kind of internet. I have a camcorder as well. We used to, you know, because back then cell phones were just flip phones and they were shitty. I had a flip right. phone all the way up till I was like 18 years old. Yeah, that must yeah. have sucked. Yeah, because, you know, Mom don't want to buy me no phone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> None of them screens on it. The government be watching. Yeah, my first phone was a touchscreen phone. Really? Yeah, it was an LG Optimus, I think. Mm. And then after that, it was an iPhone. And ever since then, I've had iPhones. Every phone's been an iPhone. Uh, I had my first child when I was 18. And that was when uh, I'd gotten a job like four months before like a real job <laughs> right. and got a real job, started making like real money. It wasn't, not, you know, just dumb money or whatever. Started making real money. And then I went to Verizon and got a real contract. That was like my first real, like adult purchase. It was two droid X phones. And I got one for her. I got one for me. And that was like our first like real phones. Cause she had track phones that, she had to buy a Dollar General, and she had oh, to buy yeah. New, yeah. She had to buy one like to talk to me. She had to buy one like every month. Yeah, and then yeah, they, you used to have to go buy like the minutes individually. Yep. Yeah. And then I had a Razor flip phone, and yeah. I had I had the same one probably since I was like sixteen. Like mom would get a new one, and then I would get her old one, like the Razor flip phones, the yeah. Motorola Razor. And like yeah. I had a silver one, a pink one, a blue one, and then another pink one with like flowers engraved on it, and then another <laughs> blue one, because that's what mom, the colors mom would get, and she would just pass me the old phones when she got new ones. Dude, I wonder at what point the old razors are gonna become like worth something, you know, when they're like a nostalgia thing, or you know, if you've got one that's like unopened in the box, and it's <laughs> worth like five grand nowadays or something. When I, I was when in, that's gonna happen. When I was in high school, I broke mine in half. Like snapped it in half because I was mad, and yeah. we could you could still like hit the button and call people on it and put them on speaker. Oh yeah, and it would transfer <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> you could just still talk to people on it. And then I got that was when I, that was a silver one, and I broke it and got that pink one from my mom. So I was like carrying around a pink Motorola cell phone. I never really used a cell phone because I was like we'd call our friends, see where we were, and we'd just go hang out. Right. And so I never really needed a cell phone. I remember um, my mom used to have the the Motorola like walkie talkie phone. Yeah, she always had the. It might have been like Nextel. I think she always I had think like the Tony was. the Tony Stewart clip on cover because like that's how you did phone cases back then. It was just like a snap on cover, and then she had a BlackBerry, which was her work phone, and like we'd always play Snake mm. on her BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like the coolest thing. I was like, "This is, this is technology. This is where the world's going to." <laughs> it went way farther. <laughs> uh, 
back when I used to upload um uh, videos, it was like uh there were just random channels. I didn't know what the YouTube thing was gonna be. I should have started doing this years ago. Right. Like I should have like started back in I don't know, like two thousand nine. Like something like that, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, because I was uploading videos, but it was like stupid stuff. It wasn't anything like, you know, crazy. And I did bring, I brought a camera everywhere. It was a junk camera, but I, I brought. It was like a camcorder that you put the disc in the side. Oh yeah, I still got it. It's in my storage building downstairs. Wow, yeah. yeah, it's it. I think it. I don't think it works i don't think it comes on or nothing and there's no sd card in it so i don't think there's any like videos in it did they do sd cards back when you had to like put the tapes in them yeah they had like a little slot for it i'm pretty i'm pretty sure it does i may be wrong i'm pretty sure it has an sd card slot but yeah it was a little camcorder and it had to it had like a little strap that goes around your hand and it was like the disc you open it put a disc in it close it and you could record video on that disc and that's huh. what we that's what we recorded our skate videos and stuff with, like a like a DVD. Yeah, until we got uh the GoPro Hero Four. That was the biggest like GoPro purchase back then. Well, no, this Hero Three. I bought the Hero Three. It was a Hero Three Plus. Was my first GoPro. Bought it for two hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. I have one of those somewhere up here. <laughs> and then the Three Plus. And then I got the the uh, Hero Four, and I used the Hero Four when we this channel took off, because I was using it as a uh, moto vlog. So this channel was originally, uh, this channel was originally a uh, second channel to my moto vlog channel, which had a hundred subscribers, and I started uploading vlogs on this channel, and this channel took off, and it passed my moto vlog channel. So that's the whole reason, and this channel being the main, is because it did the best, right? So that was where um, it used to be called the Sean Wayne, which everybody knows for the most part, right. the the Sean Wayne. And my other channel was Moto Vlog Sean, and I just uploaded videos of me randomly talking. It only got like twenty videos or twenty views of video. And there was like a ton of videos because I was just, I would like go film and I would, I had a timer on my bike that I would set and it would like hit 20 minutes. So I knew around that 20 minute mark I needed to stop and then I would end the video and I would come home and I would just upload it. I wouldn't edit it or anything. Just raw footage. Yep. So how long have you been doing like the actual, I guess, um, like as a, as a career style, like. How long have you been trying to do that for this? Like, what do you mean? Or like, uh, I guess making videos or making content. How long um, have I been making content? Um, I guess more of like trying to pursue a career or like a passion out of it. Because then, like you said, you used to upload videos just kind of for fun, like like your moto vlogs. Like you didn't do any editing or anything. Yeah. So I did the. I just. I would just throw videos up. It was never like, it was never like, uh, like everybody has big ambitions and dreams about like being a YouTuber. But back right. then it was weird. It was like, oh, my time will come. So I just kept doing stuff. <laughs> my content was real dumb. <laughs> but I was like, my time will come. Yeah. I'll just upload videos on here. One day it'll blow up and I'll just be making just, money. Just keeps. Just keep spamming the videos. Needless, so he said, eventually somebody, will eventually watch. somebody will, you know, somebody will see my <clears throat> stuff, and it won't be the wrong thing to say on screen. And <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I've been uploading content for a long time, just for shits and giggles. And then what really turned the corner was. I started making these videos. This is what really happened. It was this channel. We had this uh, Aveo. Chevy Aveo. I think this was a little small four-door car. Little yeah, bitty car. That. 
and we filmed the we filmed a video with it for fun. Me, I think it was me and Dylan, and it blew up. It, I think it did really well, and then like that sparked the thing in my head where I was like, "We could do this." So I started like trying to make good content consistently and uploading it, and it did. It worked. We did. We did that till. Um, I'll just I'll go deep. I'll go like let's go, let's go. I'll go deep on it. So we'll we did. The, we'll put on the goggles and the, and the snorkel. And we'll go deep. We did. I did this, and I was I was trying to make. I was trying to figure out where I fell in this YouTube industry, like where I fell in this. Let me turn my. Eh. Oh yeah, do right now. Eh. Eh. There we go. What you do? I turned up my my light. Oh, I was but, like, what's uh, different? <laughs> so, I was like, I seen the views that I was getting, and I was like, this is freaking crazy. It wasn't even that many views. It was like five hundred to a thousand views a video, and I was like, this is a million. You know, in my head, I was like, I could do this. So, I started filming all the time. We'd go to Dylan's because Dylan got that new house. He was like, let's tear the yard up. I was like, let's do it. So we were just doing that until we killed the car. And I just passed over a 1,000 subscribers. No, it wasn't. That's right. We did all this, and then the gambler was coming up. And so we were doing all this, you know, having fun and stuff. And then uh, the gambler came up, and it was originally – it was uh, Jonathan's idea from uh, Coleman Auto Rebuilders. Yeah, it was originally his idea. He was like, "Hey, let's let's do you know, let's do a, a video for the Gambler 500 of y'all guys." It was it was real. It was like we were just planning on doing one video, and that was for the Gambler. We were gonna build a car, do the Gambler, or whatever. And I was like, "Let's do it." So. In my head, I was like, let's film all the time. This is my chance to throw this stuff up on the on the internet and make my way through YouTube. So I I uh I filmed everything. We filmed the whole build and everything and uploaded it to YouTube. I uploaded every night until the gambler. And then we made the gambler. It was like an hour long video. Yeah. I should I should have split it up. You're going for like a documentary style. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't going for a documentary. I was like, I got done and it was an hour and I was like, this will be fine. I should have split it up. It still did good because I called it the Gambler 500, uh, the movie. And it did well. It pushed my channel over like 800 subscribers. Just that series of videos. And in that final video. It was like 800 right. subscribers. So that happened. And then we were like playing with that go-kart still. What we called it, the go-kart, it was that Chevy Aveo. We're playing with, playing with it still. Pushed it over 1,000 subscribers. John jumped it and blew the front end out of it. And it never ran again. And he, John jumped like the driveway or whatever, and it like nose dove. And oh. But um, it was like the only, it was like the fastest speed we've ever gotten out of that thing. And you know, John was driving it and jumped it, and just freaking stuck in the dirt like an arrow. Did he go? <laughs> was he going from like the bottom of the yard jumping up to the top, or from the top yeah. jumping down? He was coming from the back, and he crossed the driveway right there at the road where that little jump is. Oh yeah, he he hit that. As fast as the Chevy Aveo's ever went, I have it on video. He hit it and like nose dove. When he did, he like he done something and it like never ran again. And I was talking to Dylan. I was like, we got nothing to film with. That was it. Like we don't have we don't <laughs> like we killed yeah. that. That was the consistent content car, and we killed it. And Dylan was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> and uh, he's like, that sucks, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, 
we got to get something else. Like we have to. And back then we didn't have, you know, we wasn't making an, an extra amount of money to buy cars, nor did we know where to buy a car, you know, from somebody that's not going to like, you know, price it incredibly stupid high for, you know, for no reason. Right. And, uh, and we, none of us were dealers, but we knew Jonathan was a dealer. So I set this little meeting up and I was going to shoot my shot because Jonathan at the time was looking for something like this to do. And he would mention to building a shop and then building content around the shop and you somehow making a buck off of it. And I was like, I have, I have an idea. Like and it, it was like a fire burning in my head. I was like, I have to set up a meeting with you guys. It's like, okay. So we went out and ate pizza one night. So we're out there eating pizza. I paid my last $13 I had in my wallet. Cause Dylan, the, the <laughs> Dylan was like, I told Dylan, I said, I'm broke. I cannot go eat tonight. Like Dylan was like, he'll pay for the meals. <laughs> Jonathan will pay for the meals. I was like, okay, we'll do it then. So I drove, put five in gas, drove over there, and then like we ate there. And you have to pay before you go in or whatever. Yeah. Or before you sit down and eat because it's a buffet. Right. And it was like my last thirteen dollars, and it was like twelve dollars and eighty cents to eat <laughs> <laughs> with a drink. And I'm like shaking, handed him the last thirteen bucks. <laughs> I was like, I don't get paid till Friday, and it's fucking Wednesday. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk home, save gas. <laughs> he said, I'll come get my car later. Yeah, <laughs> come pick it up. Back, come pick it up on Friday. So we were in there, uh, in the thing, and and uh, I told Dylan a little bit. I didn't tell him everything, but I told him a little bit like what we were gonna do. Or what I was going to do, you know, talk to Jonathan about all this. Because yeah. in my head, I can see, I see my way out of, I see my way out of like broke life and, and, you know, getting to do what I love and stuff like that. So that was all like circulating in my head. Well, we had a bunch of people there that night. And I, that was another, you know, that's another reason. So I was sitting there like, nah, <laughs> not, not right now. Because it was around like people I didn't want to know like what was going on if it was to work out, so I was like, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to shoot my shot here. It's got to be private. So a week went by, or so, and uh, I told Dylan I was like, we have to do this. Like we have to shoot our shot now, or it's not going to happen. And uh, he was like, all right. So we set up a little thing. We met up at Jonathan's office. We went in. And uh, he was like, so what do y'all, what do y'all got? And my head was like the idea that I had. I was sitting there like, all right, so you said you wanted to start a shop. And he's like, yeah. I was like, what if we build content around that shop with my channel? My channel's over a thousand. It wouldn't take much to start making money. I've got everything in place to do it. I said, you would get a cut while, while we worked for you. And we helped you with your car business because, you know, the, I know the car business brings in a lot of money, like, because I've always been around it. And I was working for Keystone at the time. I said, I'm, I'm at a dead end job. I'm not making any more money. Um, I'm never going to make any more money there. I said, this, I want to get away from it. And we talked and talked and talked. And like I felt like he was going to pull the trigger, one hundred percent. And then Dylan's like, "Uh, because we were talking about I need a new content car to make content with because we just killed ours." And then I was like, "We should do, you know, if we could, like, have your shop. And we build content. We'll help you. We'll be your employees, but we'll make right. content around that work. And you'll get a percentage of what we make on YouTube." but we'll be working for you. You know, it's like a dream job in a way we come in right. and we're basically making content with work. And we were like, I felt like he was what he was down. 
like he was 100 percent down and then dylan hit him dylan hit him with the uh well let's let's try to like you know do this with let's let's get a car film content and then try to build the youtube channel and then come into it and i was like no no and i know dylan was like you know dylan's looking for dylan was smarter than me back then and dylan knew that we had to have jobs I was, I was in my head. I was looking for a way out of that like loophole, like freaking right. trying to get out of the nine to five. Yeah. So that was what was in my head, because there wasn't like I wasn't going to be able to afford to buy a car, and I wasn't going to be able to afford to like come make videos because like my paycheck was gone. As soon as it hit the bank, it was gone. Like my paycheck was out. Right it was stupid so we were so like my i'm i'm devastated <laughs> cuz it, it's not going to happen like it is it's not going to happen cuz we like that's what we were just doing and that's what I was trying to show like Dylan and Jonathan like it won't work because this is what we're doing now we're making content and we're trying to make you know, a massive, we're trying to make videos and we're trying to make money from those videos. And then along with, you know, going to work and stuff like that. And so if we just push content out, we can make money. Right. And I don't know, it just never, we just had, you know, it just never worked. So we, he said that he would provide us with a content car, which he did. So we went and bought like two cars. I bought a Focus, or I was going to buy a Focus. We went to get the Focus, and I bought it for three hundred bucks. Or I was going to buy it for three hundred bucks, and then turn around and sell it to make money, because this right. was like this was my backup. I was going to start a car business. <laughs> so I bought a car under Jonathan, and then uh, he bought another car for us to make content with. So we go down there to get the car. My focus was delivered and it was a piece of junk, <laughs> like a straight up piece of junk. And I was like, Oh yeah, this sucks. That for the Ford, the focus that we have today. Yeah. It was that one. It was a piece of shit. <laughs> so I was nothing, like, nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed. So I was like, damn, well, I could probably make, you know, a hundred more dollars and sell it to somebody. I don't know. Right. And me and Jonathan drove one night down to get the car that he bought for us to make content with. We got down there and it's a, it was a badass car. I mean, it was clean. Nice bumper just fell off of it. And that was it. And they put the bumper inside of the car, super clean inside and out. And he, he was like, do you care if like I sell this car? Cause he got it for like, I think it was 500 bucks. He was like, I can make, you know, two, $3,000 off this car. Can I sell it? Would you be mad? And I was like, no, I wouldn't be mad. He's like, what if we did this? You took the focus that you were going to pay me for and you made it the content car. And we'll just, you know, like I sponsored the video and give you the car. And I was like, yeah. So we marketed that we market to that to this day, like Jonathan give us the car yeah. to make content with. So that's, we still say that to this day cause it's still alive. <laughs> the originally somehow. we was, yeah, somehow uh, we were supposed to kill that car like within the first week and it just stayed running. Like it would never, it just doesn't have enough power to destroy it. If that makes sense. Right. But you've been in it, you know, yeah. you've, you've drove it numerous times. Oh yeah. I mean, it just doesn't die, and it doesn't <laughs> ha it doesn't have any power. Like, Lord, we we jumped it, and the transmission line got cut on it, and it leaked all the trans fluid out, and it sat for almost two years without transmission fluid in it, and it's right. running today. <laughs> and like those cars are not known for their reliability. I mean, like that it's not like that was one of the best cars Ford ever made or anything. It was just like an economy car. It was a cheap car. Yeah, I don't know how it's still alive. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it needs like a tune up or what, but it's like, <laughs> it's, 
It's not. It needs to power. be. It needs to be put out of its misery. It's what it needs. Yeah, it needs it. But yeah, we got that car. We started doing cool stuff. I started filming every all the time. Not every day. I started filming all the time. Um, I can't remember what uh what kept me from filming a bunch. Oh, it was so. Dylan gets these little. Like, he'll get these little, like, I don't know what to call it, like, phases. Yeah. And he'll, Dylan goes through phases all the time. And, uh, camera went off, hang on. Yeah. Uh, Dylan gets these phases, and he goes through what we call dad phases. And we were filming videos, and Dylan was like, I don't want my grass tore up. And I, so I was like, okay, so what do we do? And so he was like, let's start going to Stony, you know, and let's start going to Stony. We'll drive the cars over there. I was like, all right, well, after the second trip, it gets a little expensive because <laughs> it's like $15 a person to ride. And we're only there for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Because we like blow the radiator out of the focus, <laughs> so we had to come back. <laughs> so, so it costs more to do that than it did just to drive in Dylan's yard. So I just give up on it. I was like, we can't. We're not going to be able to make consistent content. So I'm just right. not. You know, I don't know what to do. Well, then I moved out to Holly Pond with the track behind my house. Right, and that's when I got the uh, the focus the. Uh, Miata, and then we started making content with it. And I did make a lot of because uh, we were posting consistent content with cutting that Miata up, me and, me and Josie. Yeah, and um, it, it made a good bit of money off of YouTube, like YouTube because we was during the holidays and stuff like that, so it made a good bit of money. But it was time lapses main, mainly, and people like that on YouTube apparently. It's like a big thing. I think that's still true, even for like the new apps, you know, your TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, Mm -hmm. time-lapse videos. Because I guess somebody can watch a lot of content in, you know, a minute video. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think that's why those are so popular. But we moved out to Holly Pond. Um, (laughs) YouTube got better and better and better. Uh, I got more subscribers, more views. It just kept going. Um, but I was never like super consistent about it because I was like trying to work too. And then I got a job where the people were like, um, you're basic, you're the face of the company. So they didn't want me uploading content that Mm -hmm. would not label them as, cause they're like a Christian company, right? Yeah. And, or Christian based company. And, my thought is they were, you know, they had a pretty big church and they were marketing, you know, to people at that church and people brought them cars and, you know, it made them a lot of money. They got a lot of business from just the church or the churches, right. both because both like both families went to two different churches and they were massive churches and these right. were, they were well-known business and they didn't want me making content. You know, and me like cussing, saying shit and stuff like that in videos. So, and so I was like, oh yeah, uh, for sure. (laughs) Cause they were like, we're going to pay you so much money. We're going to pull you up the ranks. And it never happened. (laughs) So, yeah, we, uh, we all know how that goes. Yeah. So I devoted myself not to listen to a company like that anymore was not doing it anymore. And then, so I left there and that's where I was like trying to find what I needed to do, what I was going to do. I was trying to, I was jumping like, I went from there to AutoZone, become a manager there. And I was like, I was like, I'm not doing this stupid work anymore. So I was like, what do they, they was like, what do you want? And I was like, a management position. (laughs) <laughs> I like I need like is either a management position or I'm going somewhere else. And so um I got the management position at AutoZone. So I worked there for a while. 
And I was like, yeah, this sucks. Because yeah. they were like, you need to work every Saturday and Sunday. And also every day. <laughs> and I was like, no. I don't. Uh, what happened was, um, I think it was Kenzie's birthday. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be off tomorrow. I get Kenzie's. As a manager, I thought I could do that. Right? right. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be off tomorrow. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday. I'm going to spend the day with her, you know, and do all this. And they were like, nah, you can't do that. You got to schedule that off. And right now it goes by seniority and like you're the oh, newest yeah. here. So you can't be like asking off. I was like, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't show back. <laughs> I, didn't yeah. go, I didn't go back to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I ended up getting a job as an advisor uh again so i did that and then left there went to uh, a videography or not videography business a a video production business so yeah. i got closer to closer to what i wanted to do and yeah. i was making content and i was working at the production place and then the content was doing really well and i was making good money off of it i made a fat chunk of change off of that content and it was enough for me to like quit the production company. So I quit and then I paid my bills for like two months, like up. And then yeah. I just made content and I made enough money off YouTube to like get by. It was like a little more after I paid two months worth of bills with that chunk of change. It was like every month I got paid. It was like, I don't know. I think it was like, right at three thousand dollars a month that i was making after that big chunk yeah and so january rolls around as soon as january rolls around uh, i got an offer for a job at russ Corps, and i went there and i was like i'll just work here and i'll pay everything off and i'll go back to making content and i couldn't get away from the job it was the most ridiculous thing ever it's like i got called in to working there it was weird because they were they were also like we're gonna give you so much money and we're gonna make you a fucking plant manager <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. they, they tell you like you're moving up the ranks and you're gonna do this and that and it's really just a bunch of bullshit and right. it was it was like it was a lot of bullshit I had i had like a couple friends that worked there and uh one of them was would let work get to him and it was like he would let work get to him enough to where it like irritated him and he would take it out on people and like yeah. I was one of the people there that would get taken it out on I was like I don't know over this so I got yeah. another job at production company so there was like seven month gap there where I wasn't making content at all because it was second shift and so that was one of the reasons like I took a I didn't take a break but it looks like I took a break and so when you take breaks on when you uh take breaks on YouTube <laughs> Is that ice cream? Yeah. It's like little cups. The non sponsored will show the name. <laughs> Here, put this back in the fridge. But uh it looks like he it looks like I was taking a break, but I wasn't. Yeah. It was like I just couldn't make content then. And so this production agency reached out and was like, hey, come work for us. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said, Dude, I got nothing else. <laughs> I'll take it. I was like, I'll get away from this place. Let's go. It was yeah. like nine to five, no weekends. <laughs> and I was like, that's what I need right there, baby. So I uh, worked there for, I think it was a week and a half. We did nine to fives, no weekends. Yeah. On the road ever since. <laughs> yeah, got him. <laughs> yeah, I was I was working more than I was home. It was it was dumb. It was right. so dumb. I hated it so much. And but I thought it was like my passion. I thought it was what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I stuck with it for a year, almost a year, or almost it was almost six months, and I got injured, and then hurt my knee or whatever yeah and then i did live streams for a while that did well yeah 
I'd like to say the live streams did really well. But yeah, I was doing, uh, I could be doing live streams now. Like if I really wanted to. Yeah. You could still incorporate that into your, your daily regimen, I think. Yeah. Cause we, we do have fun doing stuff like that. But yeah, I was, I did live streams. They did really well. I made, I made, I want to say I made a decent amount of money. It wasn't like, you know, thousands of dollars a month, but right. uh, I was doing really well mm-hmm. with like the ad revenue off just the live streams. But you could tell like when the live stream was happening because I wasn't uploading videos. So you could like, you could tell a difference. Like there was like rarely, very rarely I'd upload a video, but I would live stream almost every day from, right. you know, seven to whatever. Yeah. You were pretty consistent on the, you know, starting at seven and go until whatever time it may be. I love live streaming. I have everything to do it. I have all the equipment to do it. I have green screens behind me. It is like something that I want to do. Like I want to do a full production style live stream, but playing games and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like I get in these moods where I like want to make videos like this. Like I want to make the podcast. I want to make, uh, regular vlogs and videos. I want to do cool stuff. Um, yeah. But I also want to live stream. Live streaming does take up a lot of a lot of time. And, you know, because you have to be consistent about it. You have to stream right. at least four or five hours if you want to do anything with it. Right. But. Uh, I see why that's hard to do because, you know, you have to set aside. That's finding four to five hours a day to dedicate to just that. Yeah. See, if it, if it, uh, if I did it full time. Like if I was live streaming full time, I would have, you know, more time to do the uh, the podcast, recording videos, and then I would also have it would be like a, a whole ass job because we'd go out and make content, and I would come home at night and I would live stream, right. and then I would have time to go like, wake up in the morning and and edit videos. That would be my job. That's what I right. want. That's what I want to do. And that's what I'm hoping like this, this business, the car business that me and Nick, you know, started, that's kind of the hopes that it like takes off to where like we don't like, you know, we don't have to work. We just, right. you know, buy cars and sell them and then it makes enough money to where we could just kind of chill out and not have to work. And right. then, and then I got this job now and this job I have is like a dream job. It is, they pay a lot. Uh, they started me off what I wanted for for the most part. And um, like they didn't even hesitate. Like they asked me what I wanted. I told them and I was like, all right, cool. And it's a, it's a, like a good sized company, but it's still like the guy that started the company is still like the one that runs it. Is that right? Yeah. It's not a corporation. It's right. But it's like <clears throat> massive. They make like you know five, six million a year just at one business, and they have three businesses. Right. You know, full technically four, but one of them is just like an insurance thing. Yeah. But yeah, they make you know just one of the businesses makes like five or six million a year, and the other one makes you know pretty close to it. And I mean, yeah. it's a they're massive companies, and they're still yeah. like you know family owned and stuff like that. But he offered me, you know, what I wanted, or uh, he asked me what I wanted. And I told him, and he he gave it to me straight off the bat. Um, they're, you know, they started a podcast. They give me my own office. They let me pick out all of my computer equipment that I wanted, that I was comfortable with using with. Right. And you know, they're just super. There's a flip flop from, you know, going from like a company that that acts like they, you know, want the best for you. And like go into a company that actually like wants the best for you. And yeah. uh, it's like you're gun shy because you'll go in and you're like, you know, they're like, Hey man, you want to, you want to go to Brandon iron and eat? And you're like, can I? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, why, why couldn't you? It's like, well, I gotta, you know, finish. No, don't come on. Let's go. Don't worry about yeah. all that. And then we'll go up. We're up there for an hour and a half. Like they yeah. don't, even, they don't, it's like, they don't wreck. They don't like, care about time you know because they're spending time with their employees and stuff and then they buy yeah. the meals 
Like, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a flip flop difference. I went from a company yeah. that wouldn't pay me my <clears throat> per diem. They wouldn't pay me all of my per diem to right. a company at like, <laughs> like you will, you know, they'll buy my food daily. <laughs> and it's like, I've worked for, for bigger companies and for smaller companies that are like family owned companies. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's ups and downs. Um, same as what you were saying. And I've worked for companies that they treat you bad. And then when you go to a good company, it's like you said, you're, you're almost like, you know, scared to say like, can I do this or can I do that? Cause it's, you know how the outcome is. Yeah. And it's from companies that treat their employees like garbage. They don't care about who you are as a person. They don't care about what you can do. You're, you're a number to them. Yeah. So, and this, uh, they know about my YouTube channel right. and they're, they mass, support it. Yeah, they do. It's crazy. Uh, they're a massive Christian company. I'm not the yeah. best at, you know, keeping my mouth shut and stuff, you know, we all know that. I'm a professional. I will tell this. I'm a professional person when it comes to like, you know, being around bosses and stuff. I'm very professional and I, you know, I watch my mouth. But like when I'm with you and stuff and we're making videos, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to do that kind of stuff. So I'm, oh, it's, it's a different ball field when you're out here with the boys. You know yeah, I'm exactly. And so we're just out here just, you know, we're just out here sinning. <laughs> you know what I'm, that's the best way to put it. And, we're, you know, we're just out there just messing around. And, uh, you know, we don't care who sees us. We're trying to make content. We're trying to, you know, we don't care. And they, they've watched my videos. They, they, you know, they, what do you call it? Creeped my channel before I was hired. Yeah. And it was like, you know what? This guy seems good. <laughs> and like, and I don't know. They just, they're like, cool. Yeah, man, come on. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, they, they were like, they seen the good in me or the, you know, I guess that's what you'd say. They seen the good in me of, in the potential. And yeah. so they were like, do you want to build a, we want to start a podcast. You like, can, can you do that? I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, I know how to, I know, I know all the equipment you need. And they were like, well, don't let this like, you know, stress you out you know, get the equipment on your own time, build the studio, you know, make sure you're still making your own videos and stuff like that. Like, don't let us take up all your time. Like go do, you know, what you need to do. Right. And, and then they know I have the car business and I'll, you know, doing that kind of stuff. But yeah, they're like fully support me. And they like, they don't want me working 24 seven. They want me to like go and make my own content because they like watch my content. It's the craziest thing. And like their yeah, their kids watch my content. Like they were they were in the office watching my videos today. And I was telling Caleb today, I was like, dude, it is so cringy hearing myself like in videos. Right. And, and yeah, I don't know, it's just weird. It's a weird thing. But yeah, they the they support it. And so it's just like a like you said, like we were sitting there talking about. It's a weird thing because you're kind of gun shy when it comes to stuff like that. Right. But now that we're on the topic of, you know, we've been talking about YouTube and stuff, I want to do full time. That's kind of like me and you being a host of the podcast and trying to do this full time stuff. And um, I want to do like full, I want to post a video every week and I'll post a podcast every week. I'm talking about live streaming now has got me want to live stream every night and and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's just where I'm at right now. I see the potential in the YouTube. I've always, I want to put that out. I've always seen the potential in this YouTube channel. I've always seen it. I've always had big hopes and dreams for it. Um, But there has been some hiccups along the way, like getting a job, my knee getting blowed out, and then, you know, getting a job that where there was like, don't you do it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You know, don't you upload videos, boy. <laughs> and I think a lot of it too is like, you know, me and you were talking, I think before we started the episode, we were talking about, you know, not all your 
not all of your friends want to support you in that kind of stuff. And like, I've, Oh yeah. There's at least I, I know since me and you have been talking a lot more, you know, before, even before we got started this kind of stuff, I've, I've tried to push you to pursue your own thing. Like you can do it. You can make the videos, you know, you can get what you want out of it, you know, mm -hmm. put the work in. Yeah. There's, I've, I've tried to push you to do that. Yeah. Uh, along the way I've had friends that support it and I've had friends that, you know, would just be in a, few videos and then they're gone yeah. yeah and and i've seen people I mean, you know there's people if you can go back and look on the youtube channel obviously and you've seen you could see people come and go like right. you know all the time and like uh <sighs> josie was really good he is gone he's gone uh we had yeah. some differences i love josie uh, we like started off as best friends. It was, I met him, shook his hand and we was best friends. Kind of yeah. like how me and you are. <laughs> yeah. Like we shook hands. We were like, you know, I like this guy. This guy's a cool yeah, guy. This guy's cool. <laughs> he spent every day with me. Like yeah. during the summer of COVID every day for that whole summer, he would come over, we'd make content and, and stuff. And it was like, like, he was pushing me to make, you know, the videos. He would be out there with me making videos till, you know, late at night and then come back the next day. Yeah. And, uh, we just had a falling out and we don't talk no more. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I, I every now and then we'll, we'll be in like a same discord. He'll like pop up in a discord somewhere. Yeah. And I'll just be like saying, Hey, to like, you know, Taylor Williamson and, and then all them, like John and them, they're playing rocket league or something. Yeah. And I'll be like, I'll just jump in, and be like, "Hey, man, just want to say hey." And then Josie will jump in and be like, "Hey, guys!" I'm like, "Bye." <laughs> but uh, it's not like that. I don't want to talk to him. It's just like I was just jumping in to say hey, and I was just jumping right back out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. Uh, I was in a, a few videos here and there on like your older videos. Um, you but got like, you. There's you got like a fan blowing. My computer. Oh, it's gone now. Okay. I don't know why it started randomly picking that up. <laughs> Is it doing it now? No, not anymore. Okay. Um, I was in a few of your videos, like your older videos. Um, yeah. But with me and you, there's a a distance, you know. Thing, so yeah, it's so, quite a drive to your place from mine. So yeah, you live an hour and a half away right. from me, something like that. Hour fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so it's it is hard for me and you to get together, and that's why we wanted to make Dylan's house the common ground. That's why I wanted to make Dylan's house the common ground. We all meet up at Dylan's and film videos, but it is still like an hour from you, right? Yeah, I think Dylan's is actually further than your place. Really? Yeah. You know, remember we, we looked that oh, up on Oh, yeah, maps. because you have to like go left. And then yeah, you, it's because like, you have to get off the interstate and take all the back roads to his house. Yeah. So it's actually closer to your place than it is to Dylan's. Yeah, because my house is like right off the interstate, basically. Right. Because I... I'm in the middle of Coleman, so yeah. Of but we, there's not a lot we can do at your house, so yeah. No, <laughs> you can't even walk through my backyard without hitting the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> so, for for anybody that knows, I live in a subdivision. You probably know if you watch my videos. I live in a subdivision now, and there's not much room uh, to be, you know, doing anything we do. <laughs> so, we film at Dylan's house because of the the property. Like yeah. I have property here, but it's harder for you. it'd be way harder for you to bring cars here to film videos. And I'm I'm also so I'm getting a little afraid about because Dylan's been talking about selling his house. So now I'm getting like weary about all that. So I've been looking at land because now I'm in I'm in a better situation than I've ever been. Right. And uh, me. Like my household brings in a good bit of, amount of money now, so that's that's saying something in this economy. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I have been looking at like land, you know, and I've yeah. talked to you about this. You know, we've talked about this last two weeks. Right. Um, we're looking at you know trying to lease some land to keep all our cars on, and possibly like a building of some sort. And I've got all this working in my head, you know what I mean? Like, because everything's going good right now. So I was like, if we can get us like a little thing of land with some, you know, with a building to store our like stuff in, dude, it would be 
Like we could film all the time and not have to really worry about anything. Yeah. So yeah, we're working on that because Dylan is scaring me the way he's talking about he's wanting to sell his house. So, because we went out there and filmed that video the other day and took down the garage door. And Dylan, you know, by the way, we didn't do that just out of spot. Dylan wanted the garage door down. He asked us to do that. So it was stuck anyway. Yeah. And we happened to get it open enough to get the car in to shut the door in. And he was the video for anybody. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was like purposely to remove the door. We thought it would be a little, a little epic. -er. Is that a word? A little more epic than it was because the door just kind of laid down on the car. And it's been that way ever since. The English ain't languaging. (laughs) (laughs) But that was like the whole reason in that. And Dylan is working on fixing his house and, you know, cleaning up the stuff around, you know, cleaning up like the woods and stuff like that, getting it ready Mm -hmm. to, uh, I think, sell. So that's where I'm like, kind of like, oh, crap, dude, you know. If he sells his house where we're going to film videos. It's funny that you say something about like looking for property just to like kind of put stuff on. Um, my wife is real big on like looking at houses and stuff like that online. Mm-hmm. And she showed me something the other day and I was like, oh, that'd be a cool place. Like we could, we could set up over here, put the cars in there and like have all this area to make videos out of. And it's like, I don't, I don't even have any of the cars. Sean has all the cars. <laughs> it's still like something that I look at. It's like, that's what goes through my head. <laughs> like we make so much content on that property. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's where we are with like the content side of stuff. Where we're yeah. trying to make we want to make content, but you know, we've gotten a rock thrown in right now. So that's another reason we have it we didn't like release another video this week. Right. Is we uh we've been me and rocky have been like looking for you know options and what and of what we can do i've got some sources i want to talk to before i start looking for land like i, I told you about that Rocky. let's see yeah. if there's like an option there that we could do yeah and but yeah that's where we're kind of at right now and it sucks because we just got the uh focus back up and going and so we can you know make content with it and then yeah we were talking about buying a car together to make content out of. We've got the, you know, the event that we want to put together coming up. Yeah. And we just got a lot of stuff going on, which we can do the event at like Stony, if we if we really wanted to. The event's really like us making a video, but we want other people yeah. to be involved in it, so we want to like spread word and make it an event and stuff like that. So, it's not an event for us to make anything from it. We just want to like. I mean, like a car meet, but film it kind of thing. Yeah. Like we want to make, we, we're we doing it for the content. Right. And Not to make any kind of gain on our own. So. Yeah. So that that's that's in the works, of course. But yeah, it's freaking, you know, um, we're just kind of stuck in a, in a hard spot. Or not a hard spot, but it just kind of come out of nowhere. We were like, oh man, we got to freaking, we got to figure it out. Right. So we, so we got together and, and we had this whole list planned and then it's like, Oh, all this might change. But that, that's what happens. Like we'll, we, that's what's happened to every single time. Like I'll get a game plan together. I'll, yeah. I'll do, you know, I'm going to make this video release three, t- three videos a week. You know, it'll be this, 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 and this. And then something happens and I'm like, Fuck seven months. Here we go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it's gonna be. It's like seven months of just silence. <laughs> so we'll have to we'll start over again. Yeah. <laughs> but this is like this is not happening. I'm not gonna let it happen this time. Uh, we're in a good position to where we don't have to let that happen. So that's what you were here for as well. You're partnered in with me on this, and we're gonna we're gonna like make it happen. We gotta make it happen. Yeah. So, but yeah, make it or don't. Now getting We're make it. the getting the property. If we if we was to get some sort of property, um, it would be content driven. Driven. Yeah. So that is the plan for that. A, a, a plan that we already had in place, <laughs> where we were going to film a bunch of videos 
um, it was there, there. We had some really good ideas too, and we still do. Like we are gonna make it happen. It's just gonna be on a different property, um, I guess. For the most just part, put on hold. That's all. Still yeah. make it. Just for a couple of weeks. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, just hopefully. a couple weeks. And then a couple months, and then maybe <laughs> you know, so seven months down the road. No, 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 seven months. We're not eight. doing seven months. You say eight, no. nine, no, a no, year. Now, <laughs> now you guys remember the focus and the Miata cart set for a little over a year and a half. My Jeep is set over a little over a year and a half. And I haven't made any content. You know, I just thought about. We've talked about like the Miata car, you know, kind of what I guess blew you up. We never talked about my car that I used to have. Which car? The Focus. Oh, yeah. My 2016 Focus ST. Yeah. And I think that's what like most people know me for was building that car. That's that's what I know you f- like know yeah, you from. Yeah, that's what you know me from. That's what most people, if you like, you know, if someone says something about that car, they're like, oh, yeah, I know him. You know, that's how I met him was the car. It was a Kona Blue 2016 Focus ST, and I had the car maybe a year and a half, mm-hmm. and it blew up. It had 38,000 miles, and I blew the motor. It had Ringland failure. <laughs> and I had a meeting with a the Ford dealership when I was talking to them about it, and they were like, no, it was because you, you put a filter on it and, like, stupid stuff. They were like, that's why it's not coming under warranty. It's going to cost you $6,000 to replace the block. And, you know, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not paying $6,000 for the car to get fixed when, like, it had ring land failure. Yeah. So um, me and a buddy, I was like, you know what? I'm going to rebuild it myself. And I looked at him. I was like, you think we can rebuild it? And he was like, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, he's like, people build 1,500 horsepower LS motors. Why can't we build a focus motor? So I'm like, sure. So I went through and I bought, like, the best of everything that was on the market. I spent... I spent more money buying parts than what I initially paid for the car altogether, brand new. Yeah. And we built it, had a big precision turbo sticking up out of the hood because it wouldn't fit between the motor and the firewall. So I was like, I'm not (laughs) buying another turbo. So this one's going on this car somewhere. (laughs) Ran the pipes up, flipped the little pipe over, ran it up, stuck the turbo out of the hood. And then that's, that's kind of where the name ST outlaw comes from. Cause it was like, I built that car and it made, a bunch of people mad. Obviously, people don't like you, you know, running your turbos out of the hood because you have to cut it out. But that was kind of the name for ST Outlaw was, it was just ST that pissed everybody off. <laughs> I don't have that car anymore. I just got rid of it, um, what, three months ago, maybe? Yeah. It was like three in. months ago. Yeah. I got a new truck, so I was like, practicality, <laughs> usefulness of my truck. <laughs> I wanted that focus so bad. Yeah. It was cool, dude. It was one of a kind for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely one of a kind. One of a kind. Fully built, um, big precision turbo, like I said, sticking up out of the hood. Had a had some problems, not gonna lie to you. No radio, no no air. The heat worked awesome, I will say that. I don't know what happened to the radio whenever the car blew up. The radio just never worked again. Like it would do everything, but when you turn the volume knob, there's just no, no up or down on the volume. Really? Yeah, you can still like connect Bluetooth to it, and like it'll show what song is playing and everything, but there's just no volume. Like it didn't even pop up on the screen and show the volume bar going up and down. You turn the volume <laughs> knob, it's just nothing. So I never worried about fixing that. I'm like race car stuff, you know. We we'll listen. We we'll listen to the to the engine. That's our music. Yeah, we listen to the. Eight inches of exhaust pipe that's <laughs> right here in your face. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got the AC fix one time. I took it to a shop in Atala or Rainbow City, something like that. Yeah. The dude fixed the AC. I left the shop and it was like in the middle of summer. And you know, in the South, it's hot and humid. But I'm like blowing the AC. I got all the windows up. I'm sitting at a red light and the car just starts like, I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> Doesn't usually do that. And then just something under the hood just goes boom. <laughs> and like the lady next to me just looks over and she was like, I'm like, just put it in gear and just start driving. I ne- never stopped to check it. I was like, yep, AC blew. Because <laughs> as soon as it blew, like the air got hot. 
coming out of the vents. So I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to pull over and check it. <laughs> Just kept driving. Yeah, I'd done that with the Miata. When the Miata was like put on the road, it was like day three. <laughs> so it's like day three of it running. And yeah. I was like, I got to go to work, <laughs> you know? And I had little short bolts in the steering hub holding the steering wheel on short ones. It was like held oh, on with one thread. It was like, hey. And then just this one enough was like, to grab it. Yep. Just enough to like display the steering wheel. <laughs> that yeah. was it. It was displayed up there. Like you turned it or whatever, and it was like clink, and then it turned. It was like clink, and then it turned. <laughs> I pulled up at this red light, and it done it. It wheel had fell off before. I was like I'm going down the road. I'm like, <laughs> you know, trying to put it back on hand tight. You know, I'm like, all right, we're good. <laughs> so, because uh, if you tighten them up too tight, it pulled the threads out. Yeah, it did pop the one thread off. <laughs> so I pull up at this red light and I'm taking a right to go to work or whatever. And there's this lady, <laughs> and my car's already like hood rat as shit. So oh, yeah. it's already like catching eyeballs. So I pull up next to this lady and she's like sitting at the red light and she's like looking at my car. And I like go to like turn right or whatever, and the freaking wheel just. <laughs> And I looked, I looked at the steering wheel and I looked at her. And she was like, <laughs> just confused. And I was like, grabbed the center, turned it right, and took off. She's like, she had a story to tell when she got through her work. Oh, it was, man. Dude, it was the funniest shit I've ever done. Now I imagine the guy behind you is just like, What's this guy doing sitting at the green light? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Sean's up there like. <laughs> it's just like it was like clump. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the car didn't have power steering. It's never had power oh, steering. Of course, yeah. So the only power steering you had is when you like let out of the clutch and the wheel starts turning. And you're like, oh thank yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I got to work, and I was like, I wonder how I'm going to get home. <laughs> I, guess <I'm... laughs> you know, I guess I'm just doing this with the wheel up. Hey, hey just get you a set of vice grips. <laughs> well, I had that like... damn, I had the damn, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the steering wheel hub on it. Yeah. And so it wasn't like, the shaft wasn't sticking all the way out. So I thought about it. So I had, you know, like channel locks in the glove box for whatever reason yeah. car was always breaking down so you needed it <laughs> you needed it some at some point i the, would need it have you seen the videos of the guy that does like the will it steering wheel videos uh -uh. he'll like bolt a frying pan to it and like drive with the handle of the frying pan <laughs> no. yeah i wish i knew the dude's thing his handle or i would i would shout him out but he does like videos of like will it steering wheel and one of them he did like a bowl and it had like ramen in it, and he's like going down the road holding, I mean, like a bowl, and he was like eating the ramen out of the bowl. I think I've seen that, like a it, TikTok it of it or something. Yeah, it pops up like every now and then. But he does like, he'll like drift them. He'll sit there and like skid them with like a frying pan <laughs> as a steering wheel. Wait, I think he did like a spatula one time, and he's just like whipping the spatula handle around. <laughs> Dude, that would be hilarious. Yeah, it's was... pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was. Oh, what good days. Good days. The uh the hood rat car days. I had, that car was like um that Miata was like um uh, straight header when I first got it done. Yeah. And it was like so un you know, it was loud. Yeah. Without the exhaust on it. Yeah. That was some loud shit. <laughs> and I yeah. It doesn't matter when you drive five minutes to work, but yeah. when you're driving 20, it'll give you a headache. Yeah. I bought an old, it was like an 87 Toyota pickup one time. I was going to turn it into like a drift truck. Mm -hmm. I had uh, plans to put um, some kind of motor in it. Oh, I had a uh, a 2JZ out of an IS300. I had like the fat American 2JZ motor. Yeah. So I, I had a 2JZ and a, a five or six speed manual trans. I had the swap and I was like, I want to put this in something cool. So I bought like an 87 Toyota pickup 
and I was like, this is this is going to be, I'm going to put the 2J in the truck, mm-hmm. find a way to turbo it. This is before I knew that, you know, it cost a bunch of money to turbo a 2J. But I was like, this is going to be the build right here. So I bought the truck for like really cheap. The body was super straight, but the guy said like it had some motor problems. He wasn't really sure. He just knew that like it had something wrong with it. So I go and pick it up and like I crank it up in the yard and I'm like, oh yeah, it's just sitting there. Pop, 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 pop. I'm like, dude, this thing is awesome. You know, pop the hood. It was like headers and somebody sawed off the pipes. So it still had like an exhaust manifold and like one inch little exhaust pieces sticking out yeah. on it. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to drive it home. Just drive it home like it is. It's loud, but who cares, you know? Yeah. I only got to drive 30 minutes. No big deal. <laughs> and like, as I'm driving home, my brother was following me and he was like, hey, I think your truck's on fire. So I like turn around and look out of the back window and it's just like smoke. <laughs> it's just white smoke <laughs> and like i'm like okay no big deal we'll just keep going as long as it'll go and it, i start hearing like a, like a loud ticking noise it's like tick, 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 tick. and i'm like okay you no know, still running i'll just keep driving it whatever <laughs> and by the time i'm like pulling in my mom's driveway that thing is like kark, 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 kark. Like, it's knocking <laughs> it's knocking hard <laughs> so i'm like yeah no big deal it made it it's in the driveway so i like open the hood the, the motor's just steaming. It's bull and hot. So I like let it sit there for a little bit, go back, take the like the little oil cap, the oil filler cap off. Yeah. Dry. Dry as a bone. Pull the dipstick, dry as a bone. I think I even took the uh the drain pan bolt loose to like drain the oil out of it. Yeah. Nothing came out. <laughs> no oil. Oh, it was awful. like bone dry. So I was like, okay, well, you know, it'll just sit here. I got another motor for it, no big deal. Yeah, And then my mom told me that it was like a month later. She was like, hey, you need to move the truck to the like the back property. I'm like, okay, well, it's not going to drive up the hill. So I'll just go around the, around the neighborhood and park it up at the back property. And I was like, okay, yeah, I go out there and I like, go to crank it up and it's knocking still. And I'm like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> it's like blown up. <laughs> so I go to the parts store and I'll get every bottle they had of like the engine oil stop leak. But you know that stuff is like honey. It's just so thick. I put like, I put like six bottles in there of engine stop leak. I just poured nothing but that in there. No oil, just that. Crunk it up, and it was like just the lightest little tap. And I was like, it's good to go. It's perfectly fine. Crunk it up, drove it to the back of the property, and it sat there ever since. Never touched it. You still have it? It's still sitting there. No way. Yeah. Still sitting up there. It's just primer gray. I've never done anything to it. The interior was like immaculate when I got it. Now the interior is trashed. I found out that Toyota interiors are worth something. They're worth so, something? Yeah. Like the door cards. Yeah. They're very thin. So, and you know, Toyota guys, a lot of them are like off-roaders. Yeah. So their door cards get ruined. But those are ruined now. Has the windows been down on it or something? No, it just over the years of being in Alabama weather gets moisture inside there yeah you can not them. saying that the truck is like completely sealed but the windows are shut so <laughs> yeah, so yeah they're sealed ish dang dude that would have been that uh we need to look yeah. into that well i ended up selling the 2j swap and stuff i don't have any of that anymore. well i don't care about that i don't want to talk about the toyota well i don't tear it up what <laughs> <laughs> the body is still good <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about the body. Uh, uh, yeah, that is. We should look into that. We should see if it'll crank up. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. It's been sitting there a long time. There's nothing in a little Rotella can uh, What was the motor? A 22 RE, which are known for being like unkillable. That's what I'm saying. I know, I've seen videos of people driving a 22 RE like with a hole in the block, and you can just see the piston like, and they're still just trucking along. Yeah, I, like you said, I think they're unkillable. We we'll have to look. We we'll have to look into it. And see, I know my stepdad will, wanted to build his own like electric will, vehicle, and I yeah. think he. I know he always talked to me like he wanted to use that to build like an electric truck out of, because it's a super light, lightweight truck. Yeah. So, I don't know. And obviously, it's probably not going to happen, but that's something he always like, talked to me about wanting to do. 
Yeah, now the the cyber trucks are being delivered next month. Yeah, he, or something like that. This week, ain't it? I think they're already out, aren't they? No, I think they're supposed to start start deliveries like this week or something like uh, that. Well, let's not time the episode. You know, that's not let's not time stamp the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be released tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> uh, be, we are accidentally recording this one late. Yeah. Uh, I can't even remember why. I think we've just been busy all week. We've just been busy, man. Just how stuff goes sometimes. Yeah, it Getting is. close to the holidays. Everybody's running around like a chicken with their head cut off. So, got that right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I want to do something. Uh, I want a little mini truck. That'd be cool to have a little mini truck. A little mini truck build. I had another Toyota that was slammed at one point. Did you ever think, see it? The flatbed? Uh, you never, uh, uh, I never seen it, but I remember you telling me about it. Yeah, you didn't see pictures or anything? I don't think I have. Oh man, you missed out. That truck was <laughs> terrible to drive. I had an Azuzu, awesome. Azuzu Pup. Uh, it was like a red Azuzu 5 speed Pup. That thing, it used to be Dylan's. Yeah. And then uh, how Dylan ended up with it is I was, um, I feel comfortable saying this, you know, because it's been a very long time. No, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, my brakes went out and I hit Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed his car. <laughs> my insurance company paid for <laughs> My insurance company bought him that Disney Super Pup. And then I ended up buying it like a year later. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I was I was driving pretty excessively with Seth beside me, and my brakes went bad, and I hit Dylan because Dylan stopped at the only red light he's ever stopped at. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Why? Why'd you stop?" No, it was it was yellow because Dylan's transmission was oh. slipping, and the light turned yellow, and Dylan's like, "I'm a good Samaritan." We wasn't barreling down at 120 mile an hour behind him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dylan's like, Dylan's like a fucking grandpa. You know, he's like, ah! <laughs> just bam! I just smashed him. Dude. Oh no! It, it totaled his car. Oh no! It totaled mine too, but insurance didn't give me shit. <laughs> just give him everything. We had to freaking. Uh, we had to, I drove that car forever, bro. Like, well, the smashed front end, I put, uh, I put flashlights on the freaking, where the headlights were and I drove it like that. Yeah. Got pulled over for speed and the cop would look at it. I was like, God, dog, what the, <laughs> <laughs> you went in he bad, said, son. <laughs> he said, Hey, it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, he just let me go. He's like, I didn't even give yeah. him a ticket. <laughs> yeah. He felt bad. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I drove that thing for a while. It was a Mazda Protege, black, no fender, no wagon? hood. No, wasn't the wagon. Oh, Chris but, had one of the wagons at one point. The Protege wagons. They were yeah. pretty cool. This one was just a four door Protege. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I drove it. Uh, no fenders, no hood, no bumper, a flashlight for the headlight that was taped to the frame, and it was pointed yeah. out. It was, just, it was just there for looks. I had to go out there and click it on. Golly. <laughs> when I was going home at night, I was going over and click it on, turn my lights on. <laughs> you might didn't drive it home. You're just like driving. It's, it's poorly lit anyway, and the light just cuts off, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the other headlight was pointed a little up. No, maybe yeah. it was pointed down because the flashlight was up, and this headlight was down at the road. So I had about three foot. That I could see in front of me at night, especially in the back roads of Holly Pond. But oh, I knew yeah. those things like the back of my hand, bro. I could drive however I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? I get <laughs> home regardless of what was going on. And then uh, I got new fenders and a uh, new hood. And <laughs> I got new fenders and a new hood, stuck them on. And we was just cruising. Like we went to a junkyard and found it. My stepdad was like getting tired of me riding around my flashlight ass car and uh we went and bought a bunch of parts put them on and i was like hell yeah i'm gonna go to town show off my you know my new 
my new look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I left my driveway. I was cruising down, you know, just cruising down the road like normal 60 mile an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone, just like I normally do. Yeah. Just, just getting it shifted in the fifth. Boom! There went a deer. <laughs> Oh fucking bam, he just went flying. He's with the no. he's with the angels. Golly. <laughs> Smash that front end, son. I'm talking Damn. smashed it. I drove it back to the house. The fender was like dragging the ground. <laughs> the hood was crinkled. Yeah. <laughs> the hood was like, you know, the hood's like this. It was like I was like looking <laughs> over the hood coming off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like driving. I was like leaned up. I was like, <laughs> "Oh man!" I just pull like you could hear it dragging the fender. That's how loud yeah. it was. And I like pulled up in the driveway, and it sounded like a car crash. <laughs> My stepdad come out, and he's like, "I hate you." <laughs> I was like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> he's oh, like, "What?" Worked. He's like, "What happened?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> it was pitch black, dude. And then whatever I hit, they fucking just shut the headlights off. <laughs> it just everything just went pitch black. I was like, am I dead? <laughs> I was like, you know, I still... wish you just would have pulled back up with like two flashlights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's like this. <laughs> like, like I hit and everything goes black. And I was like, Hmm. So I'm still rolling, you know, because I just let off the throttle and everything because I was scared. Yeah. So I'm just like rolling, and I can feel my car like going into the ditch because it's like smooth and it's like, because <laughs> you know, I'm like running off the road because I can't see. You're like busting my headlights. And <laughs> like, I was like, all right, I'm not dead, but something's wrong. <laughs> and I was like, because I can't see nothing. So <laughs> we'll go back to the house or whatever and uh get to the house and my stepdad's like, Oh my god, you're kidding me. You have the worst luck. And I was like, Yeah, I know. It's pretty rough. <laughs> so I just like I was like, I don't even care no more. So I took like everything off. We changed the bulbs. The lenses and the headlights housings were gone. It was just headlight yeah. housings. So we just put the bulbs in <clears throat> and then like that was the headlights. <laughs> 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 so I drove uh I drove it to Sessa. This is how bad my luck was back then. I hit the deer. We took all the parts off. Uh, the next day I drove and hung out with Seth and John. We were like hanging out or whatever. And there's a picture on Facebook of like this my car. Um, we was in at Mazda Protege, and and we was cruising around dirt roads in Vimont, and I was like pulling the e brake up, like sliding sideways and stuff. And Seth and them were behind me, and it was in a five-speed Honda, and John has never drove a five-speed before. So this was like his first time he was learning, and I'm out there yeah. just doing dumb stuff in mine. Just pulling the e-brake up, pull the e-brake up, and like I'm sliding sideways, and my front wheel clips an embankment, and it rolls the car over on the roof. Oh, no. It just rolls the car over slowly. Like the car was like, it was like a, like a, like a, I don't know how to explain it. It was like a slow roller coaster, like a roller coaster, like flipping over, you know, slowly. Yeah. It was, that's how it was. It was like, <laughs> the car just flipped over on the, on the roof. So, yeah. so I'm just hanging there in my seatbelt and John like is in shock and forgets he's got to put the clutch in. So like he's driving that Honda and he's like, in fifth gear and he's like rolling up to me and it's like (laughs) it's like trying to shut itself off they get out and i'm like hanging from the seatbelt i was like hey he thought i was dead click pow hit the roof (laughs) (laughs) they've never seen a crash before and i've been in eight (laughs) at at this point <laughs> this ain't nothing to me. This is like light work, you know. Yeah, Ali. John and them oh, were man. like, "Are you okay? Are you dead?" I was like, "Nah, it's close." <laughs> he said, "Stunt man, Sean, back at it, baby." <laughs> you climbed out of that car and had on like an evil Knievel suit. <laughs> so I call, uh, call my, I call my mom. I was like, <laughs> she was like, "What happened?" 
I was like, a dog ran out in front of me. She's like, what happened? I'm like, mom, dude, dog ran out in front of me. And I, you know, that swerve missing it, I flipped the car over. She's like, what? That don't even sound right. <laughs> <laughs> It's mine's a big old dog. <laughs> it is a big dog. It looked like a cow, but you know, it barked at me. <laughs> so maybe mom, it was a cow. My mom one hundred percent didn't believe me. Oh, <laughs> my yeah. stepdad did though. He was like, That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you have the worst luck. <laughs> you had a deer run out in front of you like two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my first wreck, I was I had a uh, ninety six S ten. And I was like driving up this little back road and it comes up to some railroad tracks yeah. and there was a lumber mill that had a plant on both sides. So like they would drive trucks across. So there was always like, like wood chips, I guess in the road. And um, I come haul it up and like, I hit the brakes real quick to like slow down to go over the railroad tracks. And the truck just kind of like slowly starts to turn to the right. And like I counter steered it and it just slammed me head on into a guardrail <laughs> at like 45 <laughs> And, um, like I hit it and I was wearing my seatbelt and everything. So it just kind of like snatched me in the seatbelt. Airbags didn't go off. Um, and like, I'm sitting in the truck and I'm like, shit, like there was, <laughs> there was a wooden mallet in there. And I'm like, where did this even come? I've had this truck for like two years and never saw a wood mallet in here. <laughs> and so I called my mom and I was like, Hey, I wrecked my truck. And she was like, what happened? And I was like, well, I was coming up to the railroad tracks and like I slowed down and I kind of slid in this, like you know bark or whatever it was from the lumber mills in the road and like i hit a guardrail and like to this day that guardrail still has a red dent in it <laughs> yeah. where i hit it when i was what 15 16 <laughs> and uh she was like did anybody see you and i was like no other than the people that work at the lumber mill <laughs> she was like can you drive the truck and i'm like looking at it and i'm like sure i'll figure it out <laughs> so i drove home and like I'm driving this way and I'm looking out of the right to go down the road. <laughs> oh no <laughs> way. <laughs> it's that it twisted. Bent frame, it bent the frame, I think it was eight inches. <laughs> so like I look in one mirror and I can see the whole like side of the truck bed. Like I see the part of the truck bed that's behind the cab. And the other side I can see like the tail light. <laughs> Like Jeez. I'm driving, like the steering wheel's off to the left, and I'm like this, <laughs> looking out of the corner of the passenger side of the window windshield, <laughs> going down the road, and I'm like, oh yeah, son, this is <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> the steering wheel's like, it's like 180 <laughs> out. <You> just <laughs> <laughs> I pull up in the driveway, and the truck's like smoking, like the plastic front bumper and the valence are like hanging down, and I'm like, it's good. <laughs> just. Just hammer the dent out of the front. Like, it's good. There was, it really didn't damage the truck. All it did was like, it curled the front bumper upwards. Yeah. And it knocked the plastic down. Um, but it did like, it bent the frame out. So there was no like body damage necessarily, but the truck was like this. You can see it was like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we took it to a frame shop and the guy was like, what do you, what do you want me to do with this? And we're like, just straighten it back out. And he's like, what did you hit? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, a guardrail. They're like 45. It's no big deal. <laughs> they, ended up, they ended up fixing it. And like our family, that truck is still in the family. Still really? To this day. Yeah. They's got like 500,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> my first, uh, my first crash was, uh, I had two first crashes. The first crash, I wasn't supposed to be in the vehicle. So I don't, I don't like, I wasn't supposed to be, in, I was 15 and I wasn't supposed to be driving on the road, but, uh, I thought it was cool to smoke. It's not as cool to smoke cigarettes. Uh, I thought it was cool to smoke cigarettes when I was like 15 because we, we would like, that for- yeah, we don't endorse that. Don't <laughs> smoke kids. It's bad. It's um, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. And my dad was like, son, you smoking? And I'm like, Yeah. He's like, don't let your mom find out. She'll kill you. I was like, all right, cool. Thanks, Dad. (laughs) And this was my first vehicle. Uh, He was like, you know, go check out your system. Drive drive the truck down the road. See how you like it. Okay, cool. My dad's one that bought it. He bought it for like 600 bucks. And we washed it with a water hose at his house. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was a Jimmy (laughs) 4x4. $600 Jimmy. So you can imagine. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to drive this thing down the road. You know what I'm saying? 
So I jumped in it. There was two cigarettes and a lighter sitting in the passenger seat. And I was like, man, my dad's so cool. <laughs> I didn't know how to smoke, dude. I was just like burning the cigarette. And I was like. <laughs> you know, just just up, Come on, man. Work. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's like, man, the orange part won't burn. <laughs> so I'm cruising we'll down the road. Going. You know, those jimmies, the steering wheels are massive. So I'm like yeah. cruising down the road or whatever. And I got my hand on it, you know, like, like this. And I got this cigarette, like I'm holding it like a joint. I got the cigarette in my hand like this. I'm like, I'm like trying to, I got the window cracked like this. I'm like trying to get the ash out. I hit this driveway, just scoop. <laughs> and old Jimmy just flying, dude. And like landing, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> trying to keep it on the road. That was my first crash. <laughs> so I don't know where the cigarette went. I took the other one. I threw it out. And I quit smoking. <laughs> a lot of stuff went on. And then uh, the second crash, I'd got my license like a, I think like a week later after that. My dad brought me the vehicle. Come on, camera. My dad brought me the vehicle to my house. He was like, here you go, son. You know, I bought you a truck. I was like, cool. And so I got in it and like the, this is like, just got my license and me, my cousin, Ryan, he was very young. I was very young at the time. I was, you know, 16, just turned 16, just had my birthday. My buddy Ethan, which was still like 15 years old. He was like, come pick me up. I was like, okay. So I hauled ass to his house, picked him up. He's in a cast. His arms broke from motocross or something like that. Nice. And he's like, got this pink cast on Ryan's in the back. We're just like cruising, and he was like, "Dude, do those like drifts, like in the videos, like in this dirt road." I was like, "Bro, yeah, I can do this on you know, I can do this on Forza Two. I can do this in real life." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh. "Little Jimmy's going sideways like this, and it comes back around like this, and then she goes back around, like this. and then she's like real back around." Like this. And she just hooks, dude, and just lands into a ditch. And, the, like, the Jimmy just, like, choom, like, into the ditch and gets stuck. Ryan, like, bounces from one side to the other and then back that way. Ethan, yeah. we're sitting like this, and I'm in the driver's seat. Ethan somehow bounced over into my lap and had his back completely against the driver door. And he was just like, I'm right here. He's, like, looking at me. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. <laughs> we had to call like my, <laughs> yeah. We had to call my uncle. He he like <clears throat> pulled me out of the ditch, and he was like, "Don't ever do that again with my son in the car." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Because <laughs> this Ryan, I think, was like twelve, dude. He was young. Should have told him there was like a dog in the road. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I told him, but my uncle was like, "I see what you did." Look at the look at the burnout marks. This is a dirt road, so you can see what happened. He's like, yeah, I know what you did, idiot. <laughs> My dad was like, How long was you drifting before you crashed? And I was like, I don't know, a second. <laughs> a I lost second. I lost control very fast. <laughs> so, you got off under me, Dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she she walked sideways four times before we hit the ditch. <laughs> so. Oh man, that's good times. Pushed Dude, a, that's how it was. I pushed a state trooper off the road. You pushed a state trooper off the road? Mm-hmm. I don't know that we should talk about that kind of stuff. In this nah, it's good. I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I paid the ultimate price for that one. <laughs> it was a good ticket. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, uh, it's the same field that we always crash in. Like the owner was like, these kids are going to do it. Just let them freaking do it. So we were doing donuts in the field. I was in a Toyota Corolla four door, uh, slammed out some slick ass wheels, uh, no hood, obviously. Cause I've never had a hood on any car I've owned. <laughs> and I was pulling Wait, the e-brake. Keep, keep <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was pulling the e-brake up and we was like walking it sideways to the field, just back and forth. And it was fun. Yeah. Had two friends with me. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know the friends. Uh, one of my friends I'd talked to a couple times. He wanted to ride out with me. The other guy we found on the side of the road walking. I was like, hey, I know him. And we picked him up. <laughs> nice. And so I was like, yo, dude, get in. He was like, bro, you, yeah, I know you hung out with Kurt. And I was like, yeah. 
I'm Kurt's friend. <laughs> Who the fuck's Kurt? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but he jumps in. He jumps in the back seat of my car off the side of 278. And he was like, uh, he's like one of those. Oh, man. I don't want to judge, but he was, you know, he was a weird one. But he was in the back seat. He was like, whoa, bro, go. Like he was doing, he was one of those guys. You know what I mean? He's a he was, hype man. He, no, he, he was wasn't a hype, a hype man. man. He well, was a not on he earth. Was a, he was not on earth hype man. That's what he was. Oh, so he was a he was a hyped man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, I should have. I should not have. Don't pick up Hitchhiker's Kids. It's not. It's not worth it. <laughs> we don't endorse that here. Yeah, don't do it. So, <laughs> come, come, <laughs> come through the. <laughs> uh, so there's a reason he was walking. <laughs> <laughs> so I come through, you know, pulling the e-brake up, sliding, I slide out into the road, and I hear something, and I'm not sure it's like a horn, but I don't remember my adrenaline was rushing. So I'm like, you know, and I look in the mirror, and there's a cop in the ditch over here, just, and it was a state trooper. And I was like, oh, darn! <laughs> so I pulled over, and guy in the back seat starts freaking out. So, bro, I hope they don't ask for my license. I'm like, why? I was like, I'm probably the one going to jail, 100%. I just ran a state trooper off the road. He's like, thank God. You think they'll ask for my license? I'm going to run. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I was like, what's wrong? He's like, dude, I, I, I got like warrants out for my arrest. I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Cop walks up. He is mad. He's heated. He don't have his hat on. He's a state trooper. He walks up. He's like, what the hell are you doing back there? Look, just <laughs> he got his hands on my door, you know, dude. What the hell is you doing back there? And I was like, I was just showing off in front of these guys. <laughs> and he's like, Give me your god dang license. I'm like, yes, sir, shit. Here you go. <laughs> I was uh, again, I'm sixteen years old. Handing my license. He's like a beer right back. He's like, You want my insurance? Shut up. <laughs> you know? He like, walks to his car. He's like, Oh man, I'm freaking going to jail. I'm not built for jail, bro. What, the, what is this? <laughs> he uh he comes back with like a, just one ticket, surprisingly, but that ticket was like eight hundred dollars. Yeah, it was ridiculous. He comes back with a ticket, hands it to me. He said, "Who's your friends?" I was like, "I picked him up. <laughs> I just picked him up. This is uh I can't remember who was in the seat. He's like, this is my friend, blah blah blah." And he was like, "I need y'all's license." And that guy was like. <laughs> handing his license to him just shaking and uh, he come back he's like sir can you step out of the car and dude stepped out of the car and he got arrested and went to jail oh no you should have told him to run you probably could have got out of the ticket <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> if you pull over and that one dude darts it that cop's going after him because he's <laughs> running for something you probably could have got out of that one I'm not his Uber one <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't know him <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you like mom, dad. I need a new license plate. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, uh, the guy got arrested, and uh, he was like, he told, he told the guy like he was because he got arrested like right, you know, by beside my car or whatever, right. And he was like, do you know these guys? And he was like, no, dude. I was like, he's like, I've seen you know these two dudes in town, but I was walking down two seventy eight. Dude, just nice. He give me a ride. He's gonna give me a ride to Holly Pond Jet Pet. But back then it was a Jet Pet, wasn't a marathon. Yeah. He was like, he was gonna give me a ride to Jet Pet. That's where my girlfriend is. And um, the dude was like, all right, you guys are free to go. And he's like, make sure you pay that ticket. <laughs> he was like, you'll be next. <laughs> so he yeah. let me, yeah, he let me go. I never, I never heard from that guy again, ever. I imagine not. And then uh, <clears throat> after, after that, um, like that same car, my buddy John Rogers was riding with me. And he was in, he was like the type of guy that doesn't pay tickets. Like, never pay. He doesn't believe in, like, paying tickets and stuff. Yeah. And, dude, uh, when I tell you one time I was riding with him and he got pulled over and got a ticket, he would literally get pulled over and get tickets. Like, that's just, if they seen him, they was giving him a ticket. Yeah. I uh, He popped his glove box open and, like, I know this sounds cartoonish, but tickets, like, like come out of his glove box. That's how many tickets he had. 
Golly. Like he had to go to jail to pay that ticket, those tickets off. He was in jail with my dad. <laughs> he was in jail with my dad. My dad was like, um, cause he was like talking. Cause when he went to jail, it wasn't my fault. We were riding around, <laughs> we were riding around and the cop pulled me over because I had neon under my car, like green neon. And I had oh, just yeah. like had it on <clears throat> And uh, I got pulled over for it, and they like searched my car, and and then they like got our license, and they were like, <laughs> they were like, John Rogers, you have four warrants out from your arrest. <laughs> over, yeah, it was just it wasn't anything bad. It's just over tickets. He'd never, never paid tickets. But I think that's like an FTA, like a failure to appear type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, and he just yeah. never paid tickets or whatever. He's like, yeah, you have like four warrants out for your arrest, and uh, and all this and all that. And I was like, oh, my God, that's crazy, you know. And uh, so he got arrested that night. He was like, you know, get my wallet, come bail me out in the morning. I was like, okay. So I took his wallet, and then we, you know, uh, went and parked my car. We got in Ernie's car. And Ernie's like a crazy driver, which also never had like, uh, he never had like a license plate on his car. So he doesn't, he's one of those types of people. I haven't talked to Ernie in a long time. I don't know if he'll ever see this video. But Ernie, you're still cool. You know, we had a falling out, but I still love you like a brother, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, anyway, because me and Ernie go like way back, like from like long time. But uh, he never, he doesn't believe in license plates and stuff. He doesn't believe in buying them. So just, you know, he just rides around like John did. I don't know if Ernie ever got as many tickets as he did, but I know Ernie did get a lot of tickets. But Ernie this is paid. like shifty bunch you used to hang out. With <laughs> but he, did, they were good people. They just didn't like the government, you know. <laughs> Which nobody does. But my mom was paying my shit, so I didn't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, dude, my mom paid my tickets and everything. She didn't care. But uh, but yeah, the, the Ernie. Yeah. I got in the car with Ernie. And we went to go bail John out. And John, that's a whole nother story. Like the John Rogers area was like there and gone. And it, that was it. But we went to bail him out of jail, you know, with his money. And like Ernie's in his straight popped Cavalier. And he's trying to drive it like a five speed. And it's it's an automatic. So we're like, <laughs> we're fisting a pass to jail. And he's like, oh, it's up here on the left. So he's like, Oh my God! Second, and he goes down to first. It's like, ah! <laughs> like, like cruising down. I was like, "Oh my God, dude, we're going to jail." <laughs> we pull up, <laughs> so we, he like passes it first because he passed the freaking thing. So he's like still in first gear, slowing down, turns around, like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> backing up. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Like, like driving it like a five speed. And we pull up. And he's like pulling up real slow into the parking spot, and there's like cops sitting out because it's a police station. There's cops right. standing out there, and Ernie's like, "Row!" <laughs> like pulling up into the into the freaking parking lot, and uh, he was like, "Go get him!" I was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not walking in there." He's like, "You gotta bail him out." I was like, "Dude, I don't do this. I'm no criminal. You do it. <laughs> I'm not doing that." So Ernie walks in and <laughs> goes, Ernie walks in and goes and bails him out of jail. And he come out with like no shoelaces on, you know, because they take that stuff back then. And uh, yeah, we get, we start head back. And I was like, what was it like? And he's like, well, they put me in like what they call the drunk tank. And I was like, oh, really? He said, yeah, there was like, you know, just people everywhere. I just found a spot on the floor. I just went over and laid down, went to sleep. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, there was a dude on this shoulder and there was a dude on this shoulder. And we were just all asleep. <laughs> I was like, golly. <laughs> that's, that's wild. But yeah, the John era was quick, but it was hilarious. Like, dude, he was, he was one of the <laughs> funniest dudes I've probably ever met in my entire life. He... He was one of the funniest dudes I've ever met. He would scream at people. You ever met anybody with a blood curling scream? 
that can do it on point and not get the like their throat not hurt. You mean like high pitch scream or like low pitch? Like just like a like, yell. like a woman screaming. No, then no. Yeah, he could do it on on call multiple times, and he would do it to people. <laughs> he, <laughs> it, it was so funny. What's the upside? <laughs> what, what does he gain from that? The adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking. This is like. 7.30 in the morning. He's got to return. We don't have any money. And we got to pay rent. And I wasn't living there. I was staying with them. Like him uh, and a few other friends. Ernie was there. It was a one-bedroom apartment. And there was five people there living there. Jeez. Yeah. We were all just hanging out. <laughs> like just spending the night basically for like months. <laughs> yeah. And John was the only one paying the rent. So he he quit his job at McDonald's and he was like, I got to take my laptop back to Walmart so I can pay rent because it was like an $800 laptop. Yeah. So we're, we walked to Walmart, took the laptop back. He got his money. We we're walking back. And we're coming through Lowe's, that, lo- that little straight road by Lowe's. And as we're walking, a car is just going to pass through and like it's going to Lowe's. And John like just turns and blood curly screams at them when they like get beside us just like Gah! just screams and that car slams on their brakes like bumping on the curb and stuff because <laughs> <laughs> it scared them so bad and john just turns around and casually walks away and i was like walking beside him <laughs> like nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> my adrenaline is pumping because that dude just like ran off in the ditch <laughs> like it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life and he would do it like to cars going down the road too he would like be driving and he would put he would steer with his knee but he would like get beside a car and he would put his hands on the on like the window sill yeah like, where you could see his hands like you know like this and he would just stare at people. Like he'd be riding beside him like this and he'd be like <laughs> And he would do it for like a, a very concerning time. <laughs> and these people would just be like slow down, like, what the fuck? <laughs> or they would speed up and then John would just speed up beside him. <laughs> it just yeah. would never look. Would never look. I don't know how he never wrecked. He would <clears throat> never look at straight. He would just sit there and stare until they got like away from him. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn right here, my man. You just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's one of the funniest dudes I've ever met. We would like die laughing after he would do stuff like that. Because people would be like frightened. They would be like, Yeah, what is wrong with this dude? And he come through what Walmart one time. Uh he had Tokyo Drift playing. Like Loud. He had it turned up in his car and he was like, Wendy, if you know, how they live in Tokyo. And he come through and he was going to try and pull the e-brake and slide around right there in front of Murphy's. And yeah. the car oversteered and slammed into the curb and it bent his wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, mm, bam. <laughs> Jeez. This little car sat in Walmart parking lot for like a week <laughs> just with a bent wheel. Golly. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Well, go ahead and wrap this up for the night. Yeah, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and we still need to uh, edit this and post this. Well, I hope you had fun. This was like an hour and 40-something minutes long of a podcast. It was just me and you. It's been better. Yeah, I like this one. This is. I didn't uh, randomly lose internet this time. Yeah, that's good. The yeah, camera the, shut off a couple times, but it's no big deal. That's no big deal. It's it's a given. It's on a timer. If you guys uh if you guys like this uh podcast, which it seems that you do, I know we haven't had many views on YouTube, but the retention rate is good and uh we have views on Spotify. Um the podcast is doing really well on there. I appreciate all you guys, especially if you're just listening. I know it's probably much easier just to listen and watch a video. But if you want to watch this video, you can find us on YouTube at Sean Wayne Productions. If you want to find us on Spotify, it's under Sean Wayne Glenn. 
and it'll be you just type in Mellow Mates, and you'll be able to find uh, you'll be able to find the podcast. This is our third episode. We love doing this. We're gonna keep doing this. Um, it won't always just be me and Rocky, because I feel like we could probably talk forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are gonna create a clips channel so we can you know post clips and stuff for Mellow Mates and see how well that does. But yeah, if you guys don't mind, subscribe, like, and share. It helps me and Rocky out and gets us paid. Actually, just, you know, it expands our, you know, it helps us. It, it, it helps us. Yep. Please. It helps, it, it helps expand it, and it helps give back to help us make it better. All help. Future. It's 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 all help. Please, please help us. <laughs> please, we're begging. <laughs> help us, please, Scott. We need it. <laughs> we need it right now. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for all the love and support you guys have given us on the last two podcasts. I know they were not the greatest thing in the world, but we're trying. I think this one yeah. went a lot better. Um, again, this is Rocky. You can find his socials below. I will post them. Um, my name is Sean Wayne, um, as that's my stage name. We will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>